most of the people on the call today, uh, the the uh, you know the the webinar, most of them are economic developers in Minnesota. We have a few others, but I recognize most of the names as economic developers. Many of them have taken our business retention classes through the years. So I think we could all agree that this is really the business mom the business retention moment of our careers. I mean, no one alive today has seen a moment like this, and it's all about keeping as many businesses as possible. Uh, and I think we all know that not all businesses are gonna make it. Uh, things are changing. Um, so um, we're gonna be grieving the loss of businesses, but we're gonna try to keep as many of them as we can in our communities. Um, it's really more of a business retention moment than a business expansion moment, right? Uh, so today I was thinking we could we just recognize that and also talk a little bit about establishing your goals for business retention and expansion in this moment. And I think it's uh, important to realize uh, that empathy, uh, compassion, being able to listen to people, listen to people who are anxious, these business owners, uh, and, and feeling their pain a little bit, quite frankly, this is a moment for empathy. And finally to point to a, you know, a few resources, but you know, just to kind of elaborate, John, um, we do, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, who, if there are some, some non-economic development professionals on the line, uh, business retention and expansion is what we refer to in economic development as the activity where we, we reach out to businesses, we ask them questions, we listen and think about what they said, and then we intentionally act to respond on behalf of the community to try to uh, help them uh, thrive, you know, and stay alive. Um, so business outreach is important in this moment because obviously that's what businesses are trying to do uh, wherever they are in this cycle. Some are reopened, some are closed. Some There's a few businesses, of course, that have done really well uh, in this moment, but most businesses have suffered uh, to some degree and particular sectors have suffered greatly. Um, so, you know, Extension's been in this, in this business retention, expansion, education, applied research uh, space for over 30 years, as most of you know. Um, so I'm feeling a lot of pressure, right? Because I'm the business retention guy and John and I are the kind of the team leaders. So I'm feeling like, whoa, 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 whoa what do we do in, in this re business retention moment? Well, first of all, we take a breath and we realize that uh, we can't do everything at once. And so we need to think about our goals, uh, for doing business outreach. And you know, there's a lot of things that you could do in business outreach. You could be looking for ways to help individual businesses. You could be trying to keep businesses local. Uh, you could be gathering data to look at the bigger picture for a community. Um, but I think at this moment, showing businesses in your community that you care, that you really care, is probably the most important thing. That's always been the first goal in the U of M U of M's BRE program, that's always been goal number one of the five, of our five kind of standard goals, is showing businesses that you care and that you, that you and the community appreciate their contributions to the community, econom you know, the economy. But I think empathy uh, you know, rises to the top it's because there's a lot of pain and, um, and clearly there's a lot of loss. So um, you think if you, one more thing and back to you, John. Um, if you want to show that you care, then it's kind of hard to do that through an e-survey, right? It's important to be in the moment in real time with the business owner. Obviously you can't reach all business owners at this time, but for the ones uh, based on whatever you identify as your, as your, uh, your goals, uh, to be there and to be there could be like this. It could be in a Zoom meeting. It could be on the phone. It could be physically distanced which, uh, you know, um, appropriate, safe, face-to-face -face interaction. But it's really in that way that we can feel another human's, uh, you know, emotions. And emotions are a big thing right now. We have a class that we teach and we have people go out and do a, a practice BRE visit. Well, the class is going on right now. And so we told people, we want you to do a, an interview. And so about five of the students did their interview. Some did it safely in a face-to-face -face. some did it on the phone some did it um, through zoom and about half of them said in their threaded discussions that they really felt the pain of the business owner so it just made it just made it more clear to me 
that uh, you know this is an empathic moment. So part of the job is is to is to um, is to listen to these people uh, while you're also gathering data and, and trying to attend to your community's economic development goals. So do you have any other suggestions? I mean, you mentioned empathy here, and that's that's really important. And um, and we know that's important when communities are are doing this, uh, you know, just the con demonstrating that the community cares about the businesses that are there are important, but um, oftentimes that may not be the reason that, that people do this work. It's to collect data, used to make, make decisions. So could you go a little bit deeper on, on empathy? Why, why is that important and what advice might you have for economic developers or, or planners or other, um, you know, local people whose job it is to, to work with businesses. Any suggestions of how they might do that, um, you know, with a little more, more mindfully, I guess? Right, and mindfulness is a great term, John. I think that our colleagues in the U of M Extension, and there might be some on the line today, um, but our colleagues uh, in the Center for Community Vitality who teach leadership and civic engagement, they've been spending a lot of time in recent years on emotional intelligence. And so I'm sure many of you, if maybe all of you have heard about emotional intelligence, but if there's a time for emotional intelligence, now is that time. And emotional intelligence involves uh, several things, but one of them is empathy. One of them is being able to feel another human beings, uh, to, be, to look at the world and to feel the world, you just kind of see it through their eyes. Um, and so emotional intelligence is something that you, you might want to learn about if you haven't paid attention to that. Um, and so uh, there's a resource. Uh, I set up a Z-Link just because we have these little shortcuts. And um, you know, there's there's a website that I had on the opening slide, and it's uh, you know z.umn.edu/business-retention. And on that site, thanks, Neil. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff, including some tools for BRE in the pandemic. But one of the links is to our colleagues who've done a lot of, they did a whole week of training a couple of weeks ago about emotional intelligence. And they have several good resources that they've developed and that they've brought in from you know, experts in the field. So I'd recommend taking a look at that. And the, and the short link for that, if you wanna go there right now is z.umn.edu slash beery emo. <laughs> so had fun with that one. But you know, it's emotional intelligence is, uh, is something they're, they're, they're they're finding that if children learn this in school, they do better. The ability to self-regulate, the ability to, to absorb and, and appropriately deal with uh, distressful emotions, also to be able to channel positive emotions and, and to use that to, you know, to, um, to thrive and to do well. So that's important for us as economic developers in this moment, uh, you know, to be not only intelligent, but to be emotionally intelligent. Um, and I'm not an expert on this, so I'm learning too. Um, by the way, our colleague Christy Kalavig just told me last night that if anyone in this, re anyone in this session wants to learn more, uh, she is happy to help them. I, and I can uh, put that information, um, you know, in, in that, in that uh, resource that I have. But, but there's several other things. She couldn't pick out one document for me. But it's, I think it's an opportunity to, uh, to prepare yourself. If you can go out and visit or interview businesses in real time, you're gonna hear some pain and that's a good thing. You want people to be able to express themselves, but you need to be prepared for that. And part of that is there's gonna be some grief on their part. And frankly, there might be some grief, there'd probably be grief on your part. I mean, I'm feeling grief about the loss of a bunch of stuff right now. Um, I like going to the office. I like seeing my, my colleagues. I like going to the, have a drink with a friend at a bar. We're all grieving the loss of a bunch of things right now. And business owners are, are clearly um, gonna be dealing with that, whether they expressed it or not. Thanks, Michael. Um, so at the beginning, we sort of, you sort of highlighted uh, or mentioned that there's goals for doing business retention work. And we know there's a lot of different motivators or, or reasons, um, you know, why, why a community may have, you know, may decide that they, they want to start doing this or they want to beef up what they're doing. Can you talk a little bit more about um, kind of what some of these goals, goals for business retention are and maybe how some of those goals might be changing or, or shifting now a bit? Sure, and you know, I alluded to the five standard goals that we have uh, in Extensions program. And Extensions program, uh, for those of you who don't know it, um, the U of M Extension that is, 
is, is a community driven and volunteer intensive approach to business retention where we get a lot of people involved. It's kind of a community economic development approach. And because we have that um, really robust model, we have pretty ambitious goals. Uh, and so the first goal, like I said, is to show the business that you care. The second goal is to help the business solve problems. You know, we call these red flags, green flags, warning flags, whatever. They're, they're opportunities for economic developer to serve and um, the economic developers allies um, and the people in their networks. The third goal is to be to help the business, uh, the businesses become more globally competitive, you know, help build their capacity. Then the fourth and fifth goals in our, in our program is to one, um, build a plan for the community. That's goal four, uh, build kind of a strategic action plan. Let's say you visit, visit or interview 50 businesses. What did you learn? You know, what, what are the big picture items? What are the burning issues? What are the more slow burn issues? But you know, what, what can you do to be strategic? Uh, and that's in normal times, right? That's when you have, uh, that's not what I'm encouraging right now, but the fifth goal, the fifth goal is to build the community's capacity. Um, you know, to, to be better at economic development. So those are our standard goals. But uh, in this moment, um, I, like I said before, I think the first goal, empathy and listening uh, is very important uh, if you're gonna be doing uh, live interviews. But even if you're just seeking information, um, you know, I think you need to be prepared to, uh, uh, for people uh, dealing with the psychological aspects of this. Um, but if you're not prepared to do, uh, to deal with the, the psychological issues and, and the, you know, the emotions, then you probably don't want to be in live space. You probably want to keep it distanced uh, to, uh, you know, to a survey monkey or a, a, some kind of survey that's, that's just about gathering information. And you might not see the, you might not see the best response rates because uh, I think we, most of us have heard that businesses are getting kind of bombarded with surveys from different angles right now. So survey fatigue is a real issue. Any, anything else you want to say about um, like safe methods for, for outreach? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, your goals will influence your methods. And if you are going to go there and be in the physical space, you know, Mike Osterholm, our, um, you know, our prominent uh, epidemiologist who, who runs the SIDRAP Center here at the University of Minnesota. Osterholm's now using the word physical distancing. He doesn't want us to use the word socially distance because we need to be social. We are human beings. We need to show the empathy that I keep kind of dwelling on. We need to connect with people. So we, we want to be social, but we have to be physically distant. Uh, so so, you know, following all the, I'm not with the CDC or Minnesota Department of Health, but we've all heard the, the admonitions that, that you need to follow these, all these health procedures. I do think that there's an opportunity to do face-to-face, -face, but probably it's not going to be the best resource or the best approach at this time. Yesterday, the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce had a wonderful webinar uh, where they talked about the methods that... Um, they're recommending right now. And so they're, I think uh, they're using an e-survey through SurveyMonkey to gather data. And then they're setting up live Zoom half hour discussions with the business to discuss the findings uh, that are elicited from the e-survey. If I heard that right, um, it was a great webinar. They're gonna be publishing that webinar and uh, all the resources. And I have a link to their toolkit that's again on my document. Um, but I think that's a nice kind of one-two punch that they're using there of gathering data and then having a live moment and they're having the, you know, the chamber professional and, and some other community or economic development, uh, you know, allies or partners be in on those, on those follow-up meetings. Great. Um, and what about, what about, uh, I, I know you, you created a few documents or resources here for people and. Neil, let's put them on the screen. Thanks, Neil. Uh, sure. Can you tell so, a bit about these? yeah, and they're all linked to that website. Um, and so the first one's just a little thought piece. And so I'm just going to put the caveat out there that these are all written around April 20th. And as we know, things keep developing fast. So, so just remember these are written about three weeks ago. But I think they're they're worth taking a look at. The first is a one pager with just some thoughts about BRE week, BRE work during this time. Um, the second is a comparison of four organizations' surveys that they were doing um, 
you know, starting in March and April, including the Minnesota Chamber and the, uh, the Minneapolis Federal Reserve Bank, uh, but a couple others. And then finally, there's a, uh, there's a, just a sample survey that I put together kind of trying to synthesize from those four other organizations. So if Neil, you wanna to go to the next slide. There you go. So this is just a snippet from the one pager. Um, so you can take a look at that. Uh, then the next slide. So this is, I don't expect you to be able to see this, but this is the four surveys that we compared uh, three weeks ago were Eric Canada's national or international COVID-19 economic impact survey. And Eric's doing some, you know, he's the one who publishes Synchronous uh, out of Chicago. And he and a national coalition are doing a nice job. Um, they're having a webinar later on today. Uh, so uh, lots of resources out there. Then the Minnesota Chamber, now this is their survey from th three, four weeks ago. I don't, I don't know if it's still online, but um, you know, they do have a survey. And then the Minneapolis Fed did a limited survey that's no longer published, but they had the results. And that was to feed their five or six state, you know, Federal Reserve District. And then the International Economic Development Council had a sample survey on their recovery, um, recoveryyoureconomy.org. So I just kind of analyzed and compared and contrasted those. So you can take a look yeah, if you want, if that's useful, I'll give you some ideas. And then the next slide. This is just a little three page survey where I tried to kind of, I don't know, just um, mix and match and, and put together something that I thought might be, might be useful for an average Minnesota community economic developer uh, as a starting point for a, uh, a COVID uh, written survey, or we like to call them interview guides. So, you know, you're interviewing the business in real time, or you could use this, uh, like I said before, as a kind of an e-survey. Mm -hmm. So those are the three documents. And uh, again, they're at that website, uh, uh, z.umn.edu slash business retention. And a whole bunch of other stuff is there, including those links to the Minnesota Chamber and, and some other places. Yeah, great. And um, I think there's a lot of surveys out there. There's a lot of different options, a lot of good options. And I, th I think I might just throw out there too, that if people want to chat further about a survey they're working on for their main street or their business community, they are more than, um, more than welcome to reach out to, to us, either Michael or myself, or, um, you know, somebody from our community economic shop here too, that's closer to your region. Uh, that's great. Um, I think I think it's probably a good time to ask people if they have questions. I see that um, that Neil put something in the chat here, and if you want to, if you if you do want to ask a question, just go to the bottom, click on chat, and feel free to to type that in there, and and we'll get to that. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, that's that's fantastic, Michael. Um, anything else you want to? you wanted to talk about before we dive into some of these questions about best practices or tips with your years of experience um, kind of in this kind of work. Uh, what other advice do you have for people out there? Well, I'm trying to be humble here, but I, I think that maybe the single thing is to, uh, is to show the businesses you care and be willing to, uh, I guess the other thing is um, you can't do everything, right? You, you need to take care of yourself as economic developers. Uh, there's a lot to do. I know you all, uh, those of you who are on the front lines are just working your tails off and we really appreciate what you're doing, uh, but take care of yourself. And so there's some other materials that our colleagues have about uh, positive psychology and, and you know, being intentional, you, you know, being, being mindful, John, that word you used before. Um, we can't do everything, at least not at all at once. So, uh, showing the businesses you care, and then having some clear goals for what you're gonna be doing in your business retention moment, uh, realizing you can't do everything at once, so. Yeah, that's fantastic. See, there's a, a question in the chat here, Michael, if you wanna take a look at it. Do you think this is a, also a good time to involve other community leaders in the outreach activities? Sure, and hello, Karen, uh, good to hear from you. I think that's a, a I think it's a great opportunity and the Minnesota Chamber, I think that's uh, partly what they're doing with that uh, e-survey first and then having a, a Zoom meeting for not more than half an hour 
you know, we have these webinars at half an hour because everyone's busy right now. Does, everyone ha does anyone out there have too much email? Can't keep up with your email? Yeah, we need to keep things quick. Um, but I think, Karen, it's a, a great opportunity to involve other community leaders. Uh, you know, you set up the moment for them to be able to briefly but intensively meet uh, with these business centers. I think that's a, it's a good opportunity, but it, it's, it's going to need to be facilitated, uh, you know, by, by you economic developers. And okay. I just want to uh, add something into that, that, what you said there, Michael. It's also important um, to be have a have that plan and have some of your your community leaders, like uh, people involved in a, a board, like an economic development board or a chamber group, or just that core group that um, is there, so that when there are issues that do arise that maybe are beyond the COVID situation, maybe they're community issues, that you do have that team in place ready to respond, ready to take action if you can. Sure. That's right. Um, let's see, any other questions? Uh, no other questions so far. Um, <laughs> I think... Uh, Maybe that's I think good because I, I pretty much laid out everything I could think of so far. <laughs> Blood your, your brain here this morning. Okay. We have um, another question here. What are the tools you'd recommend we use to help businesses stay in business? Now that is, uh, that's the question of the day, Sarah. Um, you know, I like to say that business retention and expansion, visitation or interviewing, that's kind of the information gathering. You know, that's kind of the way of, of having a, a formal process for reaching out and find out what the issues are. But, you know, the whole thing about what does an economic developer and their allies do to help businesses stay alive? That's the art of economic development. So uh, there's a lot. There's a slide yesterday that Kathy Schaff showed from the Minnesota Chamber, and there's like 20 different entities that she's trying to keep abreast of. You know, that have resources and that have different tools, right? So that's that's. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't have any easy answer for you. That's, that's an economic developer. But again, I'll just go back to, you have to make some priorities, right? You need to take care of yourself because you can't, not, we're not going to save all the businesses, right? Um, there needs to be some triaging. There needs to be some prioritization. Um, so the community has to kind of, um, you know, think, uh, I mean, it just sounds a little harsh, right? But in any ecosystem, uh, you can't, you know, um, in a moment like this, you can, some are going to, some are going to, um, go forward and, and, and get through and some are not, but then there's some on the bubble. So, uh, that, that could go through. And I think that's the economic developers challenge is to try to kind of reach the ones that, uh, you can make a difference for, but not thinking that you can save everybody. Yeah, that's right. I think you kind of mentioned this earlier, but business retention work is important for a couple of reasons. One is so you can respond to these more immediate concerns, but the second is to kind of be able to get the, what's the tick of the local business environment or what's the, the overall business climate to kind of think about some of these um, overarching goals that the community can work on as well. Uh, yeah. You know, do we have other questions coming in? Yeah, we do. Uh, uh, Becky, thanks for your comment here. And, I was on a webinar yesterday that showcased the steps the city of Charleston, South Carolina was doing. One of those was to really push by local programming, including adopt a local restaurant campaign. So I, I think that's, those are great ideas. And uh, do you have any comments on what you're seeing out, out there in the field, Michael? Well, I'll just uh, say hello to Becky, who's from North Carolina and she's currently in our BRE class and she's going to be part of this, this uh, BRE effort to, target retail and uh, um, I'm sorry, entertainment re, uh, attracts um, accommodations, kind of the retail and tourism industry. And so those industries, those sectors have been really hit hard. So Becky and a few other states are part of this project to um, use BRE techniques to target the, you know, uh, entertainment, accommodations, um, tourism industries. Uh, and so this strategy of, I mean, by local, is easy to say and hard to do, right? I mean, we, we've been hearing that for years and it's a hard thing to do, but I think at this moment, people feel 
those of us who have favorite businesses or restaurants that we go to, we know that if we don't step up, uh, we may not see that business in the future. So it, 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 it makes it really real. Um, we did have a, a webinar a few weeks ago on retail. I would encourage people to go back and, uh, well, we're gonna publish that. I lost the recording when I was manning the controls that Neil's manning today. And luckily the recording was found. We'll, we'll post that soon to the, uh, to the webinar uh, webpage. That was the uh, Supporting Main Street um, Retail with Ryan and with uh, Emily um, Casey's. Michael, we've got, uh, we've got about time for one more question here. Um, and Sarah Carroll asked if we could um, sh share a slide. I'll tell you what, I think we can send out an email to everyone that's on this, uh, this webinar here with some of those resources. Uh, but, and Sarah uh, Swenty asks here, I sent out a newsletter to small businesses. Any tips for what should and shouldn't be in it at this time? Any tips for that? Well, I'd say take a look at the webinars in this series and, and uh, there's a lot of other good stuff out there, but uh, you know, um, so to Sarah Swenty, you know, uh, curate it, um, but there's some good resources in this webinar series. This webinar will be put up online um, in a week or two, but Sarah Carroll, um, that slide, uh, I don't have access to the slide from Minnesota Chamber, but it should be published pretty soon and uh, you'll be able to see it there at the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce. Or you could contact well, Kathy Schaff. I want to thank uh, both Michael and John for taking the time to have this conversation with us. Again, it's it's 930. We know that um, some folks, um, they're ready to go right at 930. So please, before you go, uh, click on that evaluation link that's in the chat box. It really helps us out. It only takes a minute or two to, to click a few buttons and tell us how this went for you and give us some feedback. We'd really appreciate it. Um, I just want to say, you know, a few things that I learned from, from this conversation today, just the, the power and importance of empathy, the importance of um, really having a plan and having a structured way to, to do BRNE uh, during this time, really, it's critical. And taking care of yourself is also um, really something we want y'all to be thinking about. And then I was really impressed by all of the uh, resources that you shared, uh, the links, the different um, things that you put together, Michael, and we'll be sending those out to you if you didn't catch those links today. Um, we encourage you to use those, take a look at them, uh, send us an email telling us where we got it right or wrong. Uh, we'd love to just keep this conversation rolling. So uh, again, thank you for your time today. Thanks for joining us. And we'll stick around until about 945 and then we'll cut off. So if you have any Further questions or comments you'd like to add into the chat box, please do. But uh, thanks again for being here. Thanks, Neil. Why don't you put up that last slide again, if you would, because that's got sure. a couple of the key links. Yeah. And this must be the Sarah webinar because we have all sorts of Sarahs in the chat. And so uh, <laughs> you're welcome. You. Uh, I don't know. Is, is that Sarah from Oklahoma State? I th if that's the Sarah, I think it is. Uh, you're another one of the people who's doing the, the targeting of retail, entertainment, attractions, or accommodations. If you have any comments or, those are the sectors have been hit the hardest. Uh, so any uh, tidbits uh, you wanna share in the chat. I think our colleague, one of our colleagues from the Tourism Center was on the line today. And so you can reach out to the U of M Tourism Center if you have questions about that particular center or, or you know those sectors, which we're all concerned about you know, the travel and tourism sectors that have been hit so hard by this pandemic, um, they're available for you to reach out to too. That's right. Was this the slide that you wanted to have up? Uh, no, the one, uh, the last slide, like slide six. There you go. There you go. So watch that webinar link uh, for future webinars. We're, we're putting together some future uh, webinars. Yes, you're welcome, Sarah Swenty. Happy to happy to send out resources. And again, you can always you can find a lot of uh, resources and information at the extension website here too that we've we've put together and um, and hopefully in a in a way that makes sense and is useful. Thanks to Paul Thayer's for that comment. Uh, 
hopefully maybe see you virtually at the NECDEP conference in a few weeks. Or the BREI conference in a few weeks. That's right. Business Retention and Expansion International is a group that uh, John and I are active in, and they're having a virtual conference that uh, like the third of, you know, June 15th through 19th, and John and I will be doing some sessions there. So that's, that's a resource you might check out. It's a 250 for their virtual conference or 150 for members. It's a steal. <laughs> yeah, something that we, we haven't talked about too much, Michael, but I, I think any of us on the extension team um, would be open to it as if people are working on a survey and they just would like to hear some get some feedback on the survey that they're, they're thinking about doing or just have a chat about uh, their plan. I think any of us are really open to that. Uh, hopefully you included into just visiting with you, helping you through this. It's um, something we're all working on together at the same time. Absolutely. Give us a call. We're all, you know, any of us here or, um, you know, the rest of the extension community economics team. Mm. Do and Lance a got a question, question. From, from Lance. Do you see that? Uh, yes. Any suggestions on how best to complete business interviews? Our community was in the middle of interviewing businesses when the stay-at-home orders were enacted. How do you maintain consistency? Yeah. Hi, Lance. Lance is in Lonsdale, Minnesota, and they're right in the middle of their, you know, what we call the Connecting Businesses and Community Program when the pandemic hit. So we had talked about, um, you know, getting together again in June, Lance, and figuring it out because, you know, our, tr our traditional survey is, is, is quite, a, quite an interview guide. You know, it's uh, 18 pages of questions. I still think that could be done, but if we need to kind of, um, you know, adapt and adapt in the moment, I think that's something that uh, your leadership team and, uh, and we could talk about and figure out how do we move forward. You know, you were getting a better response with your e-survey than you were in the face-to-face -face survey at the time. And so we were already learning um, about uh, uh, the businesses in your community, which, which things they were reacting more to. So it's a learning moment, Lance, and we'll be in touch, but that's, it's, a, it's a great question. And uh, I don't think there's any obvious answers, uh, but we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And Sarah mentions that she's got some, um, some of the ways they've used BRE survey data to address emerging issues in the retail and hospitality industry. So I think we're going to take you up on that, Sarah. I, um, we'll reach out to you after after this webinar is over or sometime here. Maybe That's today. fantastic, Sarah. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to hear about, uh, about some of that. You know, um, this, it's called Create Bridges. This, this uh, is actually funded by the the Walton or the people behind the Walmart. And so it's a program that uh, in the South they've been doing with to reach out to the, like I said, the hospitality, travel, tourism type sectors. And so now several states are doing this and we have people in our BRE class right now from Illinois and Becky who, you know, from North Carolina, there's people in New Mexico, there's people all over the country trying this. So I think with this pandemic, uh, a lot of us are gonna be looking to see what the Create Bridges initiative learns. Uh, I think there's, it's a great opportunity for those of you who are on the front lines of that to, to share with the rest of us in economic development, um, you know, what works and maybe not so much as, as, you, as you try this. Sarah, do you wanna, is there any way we can unmute Sarah if she wants to tell us a little bit about the Create Bridges program or? Um, I think she can unmute says your herself. internet connection is not stable. Maybe it's oh. not gonna work, but. Um, Anyway, it'd be well, great. Well, Becky's on the line, if, or Susan. I don't know if Susan's here. If any one of them wants to unmute and jump in. I don't know if they can unmute, Neil. Let's, uh, this, is, this is Sarah. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, I do have an unstable internet connection, so um, I apologize if it cuts out. Um, so, yes, we had um, modified a BRE survey to really target those retail and hospitality tourism businesses 
um, in regions in Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Kentucky. And we had actually just summarized all of that data and had begun sharing it back with communities to start strategic planning when the COVID crisis hit. So <laughs> um, we kind of pivoted quickly to look at ways that we could address some of the emerging issues that businesses were facing as a result of the pandemic, um, but also taking into account the information that we learned through the BRD survey. So I'll give you an example of that. Um, through our survey, we learned that only about 50% of our businesses had really any kind of online presence. And just given that everything is going digital and um, even businesses who are able to remain open are likely conducting a lot of their business online, either through Facebook business pages or simple websites, um, that helping businesses that didn't have that competitive advantage really kind of skill up in that area could be really helpful. So we are actually here in Oklahoma going to launch a series of webinars for businesses to help um, take them through that process of uh, get, getting a better online presence um, for, for their business. And then the other thing that we're doing is that as we're thinking about a lot of these retail businesses is that um, quite frankly, uh, health and safety is now a part of customer service, right? And so um, these businesses that have been hit really hard and have had hardships, you know, in terms of resources as they're looking to reopen, um, we're hoping to help provide some safety signage uh, to those retail businesses, either in the form of posters they can put up in the window or window decals um, that will just help inform customers of these you know, physical distancing practices that uh, we have in place right now to help us stay healthy. Um, so it's just some, you know, they, they seem like small ways, but um, we're really trying to just kind of step in and fill some of those gaps uh, for these small businesses at this time. That's great, Sarah. It's wonderful to hear that. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's a role crossing the digital divide is, is it's, it hasn't gone away. And the digital d divide if, if this moment has made it starkly clear that many places in America, um, either they don't have the broadband or they don't have the skills or, or both. And uh, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a role that those of us in the extension, uh, cooperative extension have, have played for years in Minnesota, in Minnesota we did that uh, several years ago and we're, we're thinking, we're thinking possibly getting back into that, but that's, it's interesting to hear what you're doing with your Create Bridges initiative there in Oklahoma. Very interesting. Yeah. Any other questions out there? Anyone else want to jump in with a hot new take on business retention methods or what they're or doing? Anyone need, anyone need some empathy? It's, a, it's, it's, it's not an easy moment for you all right now, and I just want to acknowledge that. Yeah, that's right. Here's with the city of Norfolk uh, Economic Development. I just want to uh, thank uh, Michael uh, in Minnesota for your leadership, not only uh, for the folks out there, but for a lot of us across the country that are learning from your methods and from other communities. And uh, appreciate everything you're doing with this uh, webinar series. Thank you. You're welcome, Mike. And that's Mike Paris, who he took our, our BRE class last fall, and now he's helping teach it uh, here. So he's being... He's being uh, modest, and Mike, you will be able to uh, hear him, see him at the virtual BREI conference uh, next month if you if you show up. So he'll be doing a panel. Kathy Schaff from our state, from Minnesota, uh, you know, the Grow Minnesota program at the Minnesota Chamber. She's going to be on a panel with you, Mike. So uh, looking forward to that. But uh, uh, Mike, you want to say one or two things about what you're doing there in Norfolk, Virginia, in this pandemic on BRE? Uh, sure. Yeah, just uh, very briefly, um, we're in the middle of a, a large outreach campaign. Uh, uh, we decided to initially uh, try to contact a thousand small businesses. We have a team of uh, seven folks, uh, eight, excuse me, six doing outreach and, and two business intelligence uh, of folks that are kind of guiding uh, the effort. We have a few factors. Uh, one's a, a revenue generating uh, areas. Uh, we're looking at impacted sectors, geography, and inclusive factors, uh, including uh, making sure that we're reaching out to our 
uh, uh, communities of color and, and other areas that have historically uh, left behind with economic development. Um, and, and so we're about uh, seven or so of those calls in. Uh, we've, we've assisted about 330 businesses deployed around a quarter million dollars in, in a local product, economic disaster assistance loan, and we're getting ready to roll out a, a grant of $2,000 each uh, for businesses looking to reposition their, their business model. Um, so we're really in the thick of it. As, after we finish this in, in two weeks, this was kind of a 90-day stretch, we're going to be looking for se sector-specific and cluster strategies, and we're really looking to learn from communities across the country uh, as we kind of retool our business plan or excuse me, our strategic plan for the department uh, and reorganize our teams about every uh, 90 days right now. Uh, one year planning and five year planning sort of out the window. But that's pretty much what we're doing in Norfolk. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate the opportunity. Great. Well, hey, we'll, we'll talk soon. And um, you're doing great work out there. So hang in there. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's the message we'll uh, end our call with today. It's 9.45. As we said, we'll do a the hard cut off here. And, and that message is uh, hang in there, you know, um, talking to, to folks that are experiencing such stress as, as someone who has to take all that in and try to find ways to help, even though you might have very limited options to help them. Um, that's going to be stressful for you. And uh, we want you to keep doing the good work that you're doing. So again, hang in there and uh, keep up the good work. Thanks, everyone. I think we'll Thanks, call everyone. today. Thanks, Neil.